In this movie I will document and explain how to use Unified Fit tool in IDENA package. For many more details please see the manual where there is a des detailed description of all the tools of all the IDENA tools as well as the original <coughs> publications by Greg Bokash which are referenced in the menu. So in Igor Pro first go to macros and load in the IDENA SAS macros after the macros will compile, which may take a bit, uh, depending on the speed of your machine, the new menu of SAS will appear in Igor. First, we need to uh, include some data on which we will work. The example data can be imported through ASCII importer. Um, select path. In my case, I had data available in Arena example data folder on my desktop. Choose. Now, in order to import the data, we select the file we want to import, test it, at which moment the Igor will verify how many columns of data it has found. You can also preview the file in case you want to see what is inside the file. This is read only, and you can see that there is a header in here, and then there are three columns of data. The columns of data, the first column is Q, second is intensity, and third is error. We can also use the file name as a folder name, and we'll use QR as wave naming structure. Keep this uh, selected and just hit import. As you can see, there's a record in the history area what was imported, where it was stored, and what the names were. Now we have the data. These test data are actually a mixture of fine and coarse alumina polishing powders, which we measured in 2001 using the USAX instrument. Unluckily, these data cannot be absolutely calibrated, so the data, the results would be on the relative, on a relative scale with respect to volumes. Um, but other than that, this provides a very useful data set for, uh, for analysis. Um, let's start the unified tool. So let's select a unified fit from the SAS menu. At the top, we have a data input. We name the data using QRS data uh, naming structure. Now, this data folders would be a list of all folders which contain at least one QRS data folder data system. We select it, and automatically the first set of data is pre-selected at Q, R, and S. All we need to just simply hit the button, subtract background. You can see an intensity versus Q on a log log scale plot here. And here you can see a slightly different plot. It's the same data plotted as an intensity times Q to the 4 versus Q. Um, this is very useful to actually see some of the features. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, this uh, system composes of fine stuff, which you can see easily here and a little bit worse here. And then you can see a large stuff, and then we can see some power loss slope at three little Qs. In Unified Fit, you have to model the data starting from the finest stuff, so from the highest Q. This is a background, that's a fine stuff here. So we, the first level has to represent these, second level these, and a third level which you see will represent the larger stuff. So let's first start with the level number one. Select level one and uh, click on a tab, level one. You can also check update, unified automatically and display local fits. That will be helpful. Uh, for the fitting. <clears throat> now we can make this bigger so you can actually see better. What we need to do first is bracket the area which we'll use for fitting. The Guinea area is the hint of it is somewhere out here. And you can see this blue curve would be the Guinea. So we can then uh, select the range in which we want to fit the data. We select which, the, which parameters we want to fit. We want to fit these My computer is a bit, a bit slow now, getting ahead of it. So <clears throat> we can now fit this, and you can see that now the uh, Guinea fits nicely this area here. We then need to fit the power loss slope, which is currently out here. So we'll take this curs the cursors and move them to the power loss slope area. Again, select uh, the P and B. And fit. Okay. Now you can see that 
P is 4.05, actually in this case, because these are smooth solid particles, we can set this value to 4, and we can actually uncheck the uh, checkbox for fitting, and that way we'll keep it fixed at 4. The next thing is we need to model this um, flat background here. If we move the cursor out here, you can actually see it's about 0.12. So in the SAS background, we can type in 0 0.12. You can see that it nicely now follows in there. And we can optimize all the parameters at once by selecting the right Q range in which we believe this, this level should define the data. Selecting also the background. Now we have, we're going to fit G, R, G, and B. We can do fit. And you can see that we have fit into data quite nicely. Next, what we need to do is we have to fit this guinea area here. So for that, we'll add a level number two. And we click on level two here. Now what we can do is we can move the cursors up here to this guinea area. And you can see that the currently the guinea is down here. These square fitting in this case would fail. So what we need to do is we need to add one zero to RG and we need to add two zeros, four zeros to G. We can see that now we are much closer to the parameters. We can then select that we want to fit these two parameters and then do fit. And you can see we have nicely fitted this. Next, what we want to do is fit this Pavlov slope area here. So we select the Pavlov slope area between the two guinea areas. Select that we want to fit B. Now, <clears throat> since these are smooth powders, we can leave the P in 4 because it's going to be smooth surface. But if you want to fit it, you can actually check it too. And let's see if it's going to give us about 4. And then do fitting. Okay, so we got 3.98 that qualifies as a reasonable 4, and then we uncheck this parameter here. Now with this we can now select a whole range of the data all the way, and now do a fit on the data all together. You can see that we fit very, very nicely these data. We normalize the residual, is actually pretty good. Next, what we need to decide is what is this slow Q power law slope. <coughs> Since this has been a mixture of two powders, um, the possible would be either some kind of large powders or more likely some of the powder powders actually agglomerate together and create larger particles. So let's assume this would be agglomeration of the particles with this size here. So in that case, what we want to and we don't what we want to do is model this. But because you don't see the Guinea area for this, you just see the power law slope. You have a limited amount of data available to you. So what we do is we will actually uh, add a one more level in this case, level three, and click on a level three tab. Since we do not have a Guinea area for this specific level, what we'll do is we'll actually set a g to equal zero, and you can see that the rg was set to really, really large value. It is important to realize that this can be done only for the highest level, because by now you cannot have anything larger than what you already have here in the unified fit. The next thing what we want to do is select the area up here with cursors, select b and p, and do a fitting on them. Okay. As you can see, you have fitted, we have fitted reasonably well the top part here. But what happens is that the predicted scattering comes up above the measured data at high Q. This is common for fractal type scattering where you have fractal aggregates with low power loss slope, and then you have primary particles <coughs> somewhere later. This is solved in unified fit by terminating the small angle scattering from the higher level at the RG level of the lower level there. And you can do it actually by either pushing the, this button here, which copies level 2 RG into level 3 RG cutoff, or you can actually link them together with this little checkbox, which is what we'll do now. Or you can just type in the number. 
we do this, you can see that what happens is that the RG cutoff causes the scattering from the higher level to terminate and really fast disappear around the uh, around the size around the RG of the of the lower level. In this case, <coughs> the scattering, the predicted scattering from this level disappears much earlier and does not cross over the measured data. So with this, we can now select all the data we have from the top to bottom, and we can say fit. You can see that we have beautifully optimized the data. We can then um, uncheck this checkbox here, and we have a very good fit uh, with reasonable normalized residuals, and uh, we can deal with it further. The first thing we can do is we can store the data back in the data folder, so if we do that, we can put our own comments here if we want to. What will the uh, unified do is in the data folder where the test data are, which is these three data sets, it adds in there two ways, which is the Q and intensity. Part of each one of them is a wave node, which contains not only the original wave node, but also a lot of unified parameters in here. So in this case, we have stored the data. We can then compare them as uh, IDNA results. We have other options which we can do with the latest version of IRENA. You can put results to graph. And in this case, you can see that you are going to get these, <coughs> these tabs, um, tags with uh, results. So in each one of the tags, you're going to see that there is a description of what it is. You get a G and an error, RG and an error, uh, B and an error, and P. <coughs> If it was not fitted, the error is zero. Uh, RG cutoff and K, you get a small angle scattering background if, if applicable, and you get a value for invariant, which is calculated, and surface to volume ratio. The surface to volume ratio is available only if P is equal approximately four, because otherwise it makes no sense. Here you have another similar uh, result for the large features. Now, <coughs> the Surface to volume ratio is actually independent of absolute calibration because it's using the invariant and the B and the volume therefore cancels out of it. Some of the other results I'll be showing in the next few minutes depend on absolute calibration of your intensity. So this is the first primary set of results from, from the unified. <coughs> this is what the unified theory provides. There are some specific cases where you can get slightly more values and they are available to you in the tool called Analyze Results here. If you click on the button, you are going to get a new, uh, new panel and <coughs> you can either analyze the current unified fit results or you can actually analyze the stored unified results. There are four, currently four models available to you. You can analyze invariant of a level, let's say, level one. Now, if you would know what the contrast of that specific phase is, let's say it's uh, 1091, and your data were absolutely calibrated, this is your invariant, which is what you have in here. This is a contrast, and this little tool just simply calculates the volume for you. Since our data were not absolutely calibrated, this may not be particularly useful in this case. Uh, but at least, for example, you can compare volumes. So in this case, if you look on this thing here, you will see that this is the volume from level one, and that's a level two volume, and so that you can see there's much more of the large particles than the small particles. The other thing which you can analyze is a Porot's law. If your, if your Porot slope is four, then the B is actually Porot constant, so that number is a Porot constant of P is four. And if you have the uh, proper contrast, then he, the tool will calculate for you specific surface area in centimeters squared per centimeter cube. Again, this depends on the absolute calibration of your, uh, your, uh, your intensity. The surface to volume ratio does not, but the specific surface area as a, uh, does. Um, under some conditions, you may have a branched mass fractal. In our case, the only chance we would have maybe with this one here, but you can see that we are getting errors. Uh, this is a very complicated theory. Um, 
please read the references here. Both of them are listed or directly on a panel. Uh, find the references, read about them, and figure out if this theory is actually applicable for the specific uh, specific system you have and what numbers you need to get out of it. Um, the last one, which makes more sense, is a size distribution. Um, you can, for example, analyze level 2. And here are parameters calculated from these results for a size distribution of log normal spheres. You can display it. Um, you can save it as a result and then be available to you in a size distribution. You can print it to history, where then you have a description of what parameters you have and also on. The results are listed, they are available to you in here, and they can be analyzed using size distribution tool compared with modeling results and everything else. Anyway, so that's a conclusion of the unified fit results, including the new analysis results tools. Um, for more details, please read the manual, which is available to you from directly from the menu, and there is an open IRENA PDF manual from which you can actually find more details than were described here.